Hey folks, Randy Go Trout Magnet Man with you here today. And folks, I finally got a fishing video. I tell you, it's been so long since I've been fishing. Uh, I, I, it, it, I, I've never gone that long in my life in the past, I don't know, 40, 50 years without fishing. But it's been months and months and uh, I was glad to get back on the water. A friend of mine uh, wanted to go try a lake that's close by here, uh, which I've been to fishing off the bank a few times, but didn't have any luck over there. And he has a boat and uh, he wanted to put in over there. And uh, first time he's been on the lake, first time I've been on the lake. So we put the boat in, looking for bluegill beds, shellcracker beds, whatever we could find. Didn't find a whole lot of beds, but uh, uh, we found beds that had, uh, you know, a few fish on each bed. I think we're a couple of weeks late to the party. Uh, really, I think we should have been there a week, week and a half ago or something like that. Uh, but uh, we, we did find some good fish. We found some quality fish. Caught quite a few fish. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know the numbers we caught. I, I, my buddy took home, uh, I think, 14 uh, big shell cracker, big bluegill. I didn't do any measurement on them. I didn't have my measuring board, my hog trough, where you can get a good perspective on it. But several of these bluegill were nine inches. A lot of them were eight and a half inches. A good girth on most of them. Uh, some of them really, really thick, fat. Uh, the shellcracker were, were really nice. They were, I'm gonna say they're 11 inch shellcracker. Beautiful fish, absolutely gorgeous fish. Uh, got into a number of them. I wish I'd have got into a lot more. I wish I'd found a bed that had 150 bluegill on it, but that wasn't the case. But uh, we did very well. I used my uh, Xenon, 2000 SH reel, uh, spooled up with the Verivas three pound test twitch master nylon, which is unusual for me. I don't, if you watch the channel for any length of time, you know, I'm not a fan of nylon lines, but you know, nylon lines have their place. Um, and yesterday what I was wanting to avoid was, uh, I just didn't want to fool with tying on the leader. Uh, I, I just didn't want to do it, but I had a spare rod with me in case uh, something happened to the rod I was using, uh, and a spare reel. And the reel, of course, was spooled up with the Esther Lemony line, which I absolutely love. But I just didn't want to fool with tying the leader yesterday. I said, you know, I just want to go out here and and, and relax and not, not have to do as much work as possible, uh, or little work as possible, to catch these fish. And it worked out well. Uh, if you're gonna use nylon line, uh, the Twitch Master, uh, you can't beat it. It's very low stretch, very thin diameter for its uh, 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 rating. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just good nylon line. Even though I'm not a fan of nylon lines, there are just gonna be certain cases where I use it and yesterday was one of them. The rod I used yesterday, and I'm gonna do a, uh, another video talking about the rod. Uh, the Luna Kia six foot three medium light now, keep in mind, folks, when I'm telling you medium light, it's a medium light hybrid game rod. You think, well, okay, you're, you're an ultralight angler. Well, let me tell you, Japanese rods, uh, when, it's, when it's a hybrid light game rod and says medium light, that's uh, when you pick up a rod here in the States, you, it's rated ultralight, uh, this is what you're going to think the rod is. It's, it's truly an ultralight rod. Uh, as I've said before, you know, the Japanese build rods for... Uh, different species of fish. And the hybrid light game was built for aging, uh, uh, Mabayru, which are rockfish, and horse mackerel, which are not big fish at all. Uh, this rod's just a little more robust. Uh, and, uh, but you'll see in the bending curve, if you look at uh, some of the, some of the uh, action on the video, you'll see the bending curve with, the, you know, these bluegill, I mean, it, it's, just a, it's just a fantastic rod. Uh, worked out real good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I bought it. Uh, I'll do, but as I said, I'm going to do another review of that later on, a separate review uh, to talk about the ride at length. Uh, all I had with me, all I took with me on purpose, was a Miho light game case right here that's filled with trout magnets. I have uh, one, two, three, four colors of trout magnets in here. Uh, the only colors I used were bison and a little bit of sow bug. I have my jig heads in here. I have some of my uh, pieces of the Berkeley Pyre Wiggler in this case. That's all you need to go fishing. And so yesterday I took it and I took my tackle bag. But the only thing in my tackle bag 
with my Miho light game case, my sunglasses, uh, my phone. Uh, that was that was it. Uh, I just didn't want a lot of. Uh, I had a pair of line snips in there. I just you know I, I've got to where I don't like to carry a lot of gear, and so it just proves you know I di I didn't need anything else. These trout magnets caught me all the fish I wanted to catch. Old standby bison. I tell you folks, it's just a fantastic color of trout magnet. It works great. A cyborg works great too. Uh, but bison, I I've just caught. I've caught. I don't know how many fish I've caught. It's thousands upon thousands of fish with bison colored trout magnet. Now, yesterday, because I'm down to, uh, uh, I showed you my pegboard. I'm down to maybe a year's worth, uh, maybe a little bit more, of my Daiwa Kekabajin uh, jig heads, uh, which I absolutely love. Uh, so I said, okay, I, I got some other jig heads. Uh, let me, you know, you know, let me, let me put them to use instead of using up all my dye with jig heads. Uh, before I had to find something else, I'm going to settle on, which I'm thinking about the Gamagatsu. And I may order some of Ifish's uh, jig heads to see what they're like. Uh, they're number 12 hook on them, which is, you know, it, for me, it's a little small. I, number 10, I have no problem with that. Number 12, I don't know, but I, I may order some of them to see how they do. But anyway, yesterday, I use the 1.5 gram range cross uh, jig head, uh, the hook size, they call it uh, medium, uh, which I'm not sure what that means. It looks like it's a number six hook to me. But anyway, it worked out well. It worked out real well. I mean, these fish were stuck. They were stuck good. Uh, and I think there at the end, I, I lost one of my, uh, I, actually, I thought I lost one of my range cross jig heads, but actually, uh, it actually, when it broke off, it fell out. I thought it was uh, deep in the fish, but it wasn't. Uh, it fell out, so I recovered that. But I switched to when that happened. I switched to a a dime with your kid, one that I already had used quite a few times. Uh, but but the range cross worked out well. It's not a dime uh, gecko quality as far as sharpness. The quality is great, but the sharpness is it's it's sharp. Don't get me wrong, it's sharp, but it ain't sharp as a dime with your kids. But it worked out real good. Uh, neither one of us uh, yesterday had ever, you know, ever been to this lake in the boat. Uh, what, what I was surprised at with this lake, uh, you know, it's known as a, as a good bluegill, good shellcracker lake, and I, I guess it is. But we scan approximately half of that lake, uh, and uh, we found very few beds. I mean, we found some beds, but uh, you know, my way of thinking is a two hundred and something acre lake. There should have been a whole lot more beds in that lake, a whole lot more. Now, maybe they're all on the other half of the lake that we didn't scan. I don't know. We're probably going to go back next week and see. But I was kind of surprised at that. But, I, I, you know, I've seen that in lakes before uh, where they're in a down cycle, where a lot of fish have been taken out of there. And I think you can take 50 bluegill out of this lake, which 200-something acres, that can really that can really put a hurt on it. That's a fact. Uh, people people love to take fish home. And yesterday, my buddy took home 14 fish. We didn't take home no 50, but took home 14. But uh, I don't know. We're gonna get back out on the lake and uh, scan the other part of the lake at some point in time and see see just how many beds we find. I'm hoping we find a lot more beds. But uh, the fish come out of there with beautiful color. You'll see in the video. The fish are absolutely gorgeous colors. It's tannic water at that lake. Uh, the name of the lake is Bald Knob Lake. It's, it's, it's not, you know, 15 minutes from the house, something like that. So when I get my boat, uh, you know, it will be a good lake for me to run over to, not have to try, drive far and, and maybe catch some fish. Uh, what I was surprised, I, I, I didn't catch uh, many little bluegill, uh, specifically long ear sunfish, which it has long ear sunfish in it because I've caught a few over there off the bank. Uh, but didn't get any of them. I don't. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, we're going. We're going to explore the lake uh, a lot more. Uh, see. See what we can find. Uh, you know, there's supposed to be bass in the lake. I know people are aware of bass fishing all the time. Although I'm not after bass. Uh, but the lake has crappie. Uh, people catch a lot of crappie out of there. I think people take a lot of crappie home too. I talked to a gentleman that fishes the lake. You know, several times a week. He said the average crappie in there is about 10 inches. So. You know, I don't, I don't know what uh, what we'll find in there, but uh, but anyway, we're going to continue to fish it. And uh, there's a UPS man delivering a package, so let me uh, halt this video just for a second and come right back.
Okay, folks, I'm back. The UPS dropped off a couple of packages for my wife there. Uh, anyway, uh, gonna get back out and fish the lake uh, uh, when we can. Uh, I'm very thankful my buddy uh, called me up and wanted to go fish that lake. Uh, There's an opportunity to go fishing, and, and I went. And folks, let me tell you something. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed that trip yesterday. Uh, been way too long since I've been on the water. Uh, I felt like a little kid out there again. Uh, I mean, it was it was just uh, it was good for my health, as I like to say. It was very good for my health. I, I need to be fishing. Need to be fishing a lot more. But uh, as I've said before, I'm probably not going to get a boat till July. Uh, and I hope I can get one in. I hope the boat that they're talking about being ready is that actually ready in July. We'll see. But anyway, um, going to get up a review of the, uh, I didn't tell you what rod I, I fished, I don't think. Uh, or yeah, I did too. The uh, Luna Kia, uh, six foot three medium light. Uh, but anyway, going to get up a full review of that. Uh, and uh, going to continue to continue to march here hope we can get back in the groove here and get to making a lot more fishing videos and uh, get them posted um, now the video yesterday uh, I noticed my uh, camera angle <laughs> was a little askew uh, tilted one way and, and you know I, I I was so excited about being on the water and yeah I was filming and I was anxious to film and, and excited to be filming but I kind of you know I kind of just didn't get the level of the camera adjusted right on my chest and so that's why that's like that so if you'll look over that i'd appreciate it so anyway folks hope all of you are well hope all of you are out able to fish hope you're catching a bunch of fish and uh hope things are going well for you and uh we're gonna get back on uh the fish again and we're gonna get fishing and uh making some more videos so until next time, sort up them all, and life is good. Randy Go Trout Magnet Man with you here today. My buddy Ron has graciously taken me out to Ball Knob Lake here today. First time for either one of us to be on the lake, really. I fished it from the bank a little bit, but uh, that wasn't much. So anyway, got the trout magnets, uh, which is the only lure I brought today. So uh, we're going to see how we'll do. So come on with me, folks, and let's see can we catch some fish. How deep is it here, Ron? Eight feet. Eight feet. Right. And I'll be up. I'll be up there. All right. Just a yeah, no, that's no problem. Here we go, folks. <laughs> Got me a, a little bass right off the bat here. A little bitty large mouth, but that sure felt good. Here we go. Here we go. Stay back here, Ryan, a little bit in case this is a bed here. I don't know if it is or not. Nice bluegill, though. Nice bluegill. Well, it's pretty. Not the size we're really looking for to keep. Beautiful fish, though. Beautiful fish. All right. There he is, Ron. There he is. All Wait right, folks. Rod. Yes, sir. Come on up out of here. Come on up out of here. Shoot fire. That show feels good, folks. Yes, sir. Oh, this is a beautiful fish. I want you to look at this thing. Yes, sir. This is absolutely gorgeous now. Look at this fish. Oh, but that's that fish got some beautiful colors, folks. All right. You want to keep him running? Let's wait a minute and see if we can okay. catch a, All right. a dozen bigger ones. There he is. There he is. <laughs> All right, folks, another beautiful fish. It ain't quite the size I'd want, but uh, let me tell you something. I ain't been fishing so long. This is just good for my health right here now, I'm telling you. Partner's got on a fish. There's another little brim right there. Shell cracker. Oh, yes. Oh, look that's, at here, folks. That's a keeper. Right? Look at here. Now, there, there you go. That's a gorgeous fish. All right. There he is. There he is. Pretty good fish here. 
they pretty good. They all good to me, folks. Come on, get up out of here. What I got? I got, got uh, Ronnie, I don't got any line here. Uh oh, well. Need the net. <laughs> Need the there. net. Okay. Need the net. Coming to you. All right, folks. We own some shell cracker here. It's a nice shell cracker. Thank you, sir. We won't keep that in place. All right. All right. Oh, this is a. This is a mixed fish here, folks. This one's part bluegill and part shell cracker, but that's a that's a good specimen right there. Yes, sir. They they done hybridized. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Double up. Oh, this is a better fish here. Yes, sir. This may be Mr. Shell Cracker here. Let's see what we got, folks. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, this. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. This is what we want right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gonna need to keep that net up here. Let me see. Let me try to get this fish up here. Get the net. I got him. I got him. I got him. Beautiful shell cracker, folks. Beautiful shell cracker. Would you just look at that fish? Would you just look at him? Gorgeous fish. All right. There he is. There. <laughs> yes, sir, folks. Another good shell cracker. I'm gonna bring that net up here, Ron. This is a good shell cracker. This is good. I can't. I can't lift this one. Shoot fire, folks! Look at here. Look at here. Just look here at this fish. Let me get him over here. Yes, sir. All right. That's what I'm talking about now. Yes, sir. Beautiful shell cracker, folks. Beautiful shell cracker. Let me get this thing up here right. Beautiful fish. All right. This lake lake. Yep. At the right time. Right time. Sure. Yep. There he is. There he is. There he is, folks. Yes, sir. Good fish, good fish, good fish. Yes, sir, good bluegill. Boy, it's a beautiful bluegill. I want you to look at this thing. Wow, this is a, this here is a, this this is a. Mac Daddy. This is a Mac Daddy bluegill here now, folks. This is a nine inch fish. I, I ain't got a measuring board, but that's all right. Look at, look at the girth. Look at the girth on that thing. Just look at the girth on that fish. Beautiful fish on the trout man. All right, let's get him back. You want to keep him run? Yep. Yeah, they've slowed down, but uh, you know, I told you there wasn't that many on there. I mean, there he is. Very good fish. Another good fish. Let's see. I think. Let's see. Oh, he's all right. Hey, you give me all the fun I want. That's a fact now. That's a fact. I'll take them all day like this if that's what we got. It's a nice little seven inch, seven and a half inch bluegill. Shoot fire, folks. I'm having a ball here. Of course we would you know we weren't looking for bluegill, we were looking for white bass. Well you threw it in about the right spot because you went right there he is. There he is. Need the net on this one. Yep. Need the net on this one. I think. Let me see. Maybe he's fooled me. I don't know. I got the net right on this side right here. Ah, oh, shoot. This joker done. Uh, okay. Nice. No, I got him. That's a good bluegill, though. But yeah, they're right there in front of us. 
Nice little seven inch bluegill, folks. Give me a lot of fun. All right. we got here? Do I need the net? I believe I do need the net. I tell you what now, this here is <laughs> this is a nice bluegill here. He's pretty. He is pretty. Look here folks, this beautiful bluegill. That's a good solid 8 inch bluegill right there. Alright, you want him? Yeah. Come on up in this boat. Yes, sir. Where's he at? Nice bluegill, folks. Real nice bluegill. Shoot fire. What you talking about? Chunky bluegill. In the box. Yes, sir. Look at that, folks. Look at the girth. That joker's fat. All right. Beautiful fish. All right. Smelling bluegill beds. I smell, I smell what you're smelling. I don't know what it is, but I'm selling. There he is, there he is. Ooh, 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 good fish, good fish. They're all good fish on this outfit, folks. <laughs> but he is, he's a nice fish. All right. Put him in the box. Golly, I missed that one. I looked at him and the fish took off. Beautiful bluegill. Beautiful, eight, eight and a half inches, good girth. All right, he's going in the box.